Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wade Bradford and on this channel we talk about stories, books, movies, and mayhem. And today we're talking about one of my favorite childhood films, The Black Cauldron. The good, the bad, and the gurgi. This film is soon to come out on Blu-ray for the first time. It's also available on Disney Plus and it looks beautiful. So as you can see, since I'm talking about a fantasy film, I have my puffy white shirt on. So let's get into The Black Cauldron and find out why some people love it, a lot of people can't stand it, and when it came out in 1985, it was a huge flop. And I want to find out why. So what's good about The Black Cauldron? Well, for me, or should I say for my 13-year-old self, The Black Cauldron came out when I was in the height of my nerdiness and in love with Dungeons and Dragons, both the role-playing game and the cartoon, fantasy films, The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, I was into fantasy. And I also grew up watching tons of Disney cartoons. Pinocchio was one of my all-time favorite movies growing up as a little kid. And earlier in the 1980s, I had fallen in love with The Fox and the Hound. The Black Cauldron has been criticized for being too dark for younger audiences. Oh my God! But at the same time, Disney cartoons are no stranger to spooky, scary things. I was freaked out by the Wicked Witch in Snow White. I was mesmerized by the Night on Bald Mountain sequence in Fantasia. I was delightfully disturbed by the pink elephants in Dumbo. And every Halloween I love to panic along with Ichabod Crane in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. So really, creepiness in Disney cartoons is nothing new, but for Black Cauldron they were really pushing the envelope. According to the internet, The Black Cauldron was going to receive an R rating because of some of the violent graphic scenes that took place at the end when the Cauldron Born are attacking the human minions. So they took a lot of that material out, but still the creepy graphic parts that remained warranted a PG rating, which was a first for Disney cartoons. But again, for me as a 13 year old boy, thumbs up, double thumbs up on the graphic creepy stuff, right? I loved seeing the creepy skeletal horn king. I loved the skeleton army. I mean, I grew up watching the old Sinbad film, so who doesn't love a good skeleton army, am I right? And the ending sequence where the Horn King gets sucked into the cauldron and his flesh has fallen off, thumbs up on that too. I, I loved it. I liked it. I thought it was great. And yet I was still young enough to get caught up in the wonder of the, the fairy pixie world that we get to see. I was simultaneously amused and annoyed by Gurgi, because I thought he was a pest, but at the same time, when he sacrifices himself at the end by jumping into the cauldron to break the spell, I. I I was sad, I was worried about him. So when the film delivers a happy ending with Gurgi alive and well in the cauldron, I was very satisfied. I was also at the perfect age where I could relate to our male protagonist hero and have a crush on the female protagonist hero. So when Gurgi nudges their two heads together, luring them into a kiss as a 13 year old boy, I liked that. I didn't want to admit that I liked that, but I liked it. And the magical sword. I love the magical sword. I was big into lightsabers, of course, at the time. So anything that looked remotely like a lightsaber, I highly approved of that. And since I was a lazy little kid, I liked the idea that a sword was going to do all the fighting for me. And since I was 13, which meant I was, you know, on the verge of becoming a teenager, I did have more of an interest in the filmmaking process. There was a TV special that came out right before this that was talking about the making of The Black Cauldron and it hyped it up. I remember watching it, being fascinated by the process of animation, uh, seeing the voice actors at work, the very, by today's standards, primitive computer animation, but for the standards of the time, it was, it was pretty incredible stuff. So when I got to see the whole film, I was really impressed with all the technical achievements that were, were thrown into this epic. So why did it flop? Well, I think one reason is that like I said, I loved it as a 13 year old boy, but I don't know that just targeting 13 and 14 year old boys would be the right strategy for a Disney animated film at the time. I'm going to guess here, but I'm thinking that, that Disney executives were probably hoping to have a much wider net, that they wanted to bring in kids as young as six and seven, maybe even younger, and grown ups all the way to their 30s, and of course parents and grandparents got to take the kids along. 
the Black Cauldron didn't have that massive level of appeal. Disney wouldn't really sort of master that formula, I don't think, until The Little Mermaid came around. And then boys, girls of all ages, and grown-ups, parents, grandparents, everybody wanted to see The Little Mermaid, and then Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and many more Disney cartoons after that. So The Black Cauldron had limited appeal because it was high fantasy. And it seems to be borrowing the, the very somber mood that's in Ralph Baskey's Lord of the Rings cartoon. And although I was very fond of the Lord of the Rings cartoon, it's not really the kind of mood you want to create for a Disney film. Although the Black Cauldron has its creepy moments, I think the slowness of the plot was probably something that just didn't attract large amounts of people. Black Cauldron came out in 1985, but in 1983, Two years before, we had this incredible arcade achievement, this historic video game, Dragon's Lair. So all those technical wonders that I was talking about with the Black Cauldron were already, for the most part, embedded in this animated game directed by Don Bluth. So you get all the fantasy, but you also get a very fast-paced storyline. People were addicted to this game. This game came out, this was the first video game that I was aware of that cost 50 cents to play. And we would line up in the arcade and we would hover around somebody that had enough money to, <laughs> to keep playing this game. So releasing The Black Cauldron a couple years after Dragon's Lair and a couple years after Star Wars and other fantasy related films probably made The Black Cauldron seem old fashioned. When I watch The Black Cauldron today, it seems closer in spirit to The Sword in the Stone than it does to The Little Mermaid. And I'm very sad to report that the direct competition to The Black Cauldron at the time was the Care Bears movie, which I did not watch. I might watch it later. I haven't seen the Care Bears movie, but I can't imagine that the Care Bears movie is a better film than The Black Cauldron. But that does show you that there was a certain type of animated feature films that were happening that were based upon toys and based upon creating interest that would draw in the 4 to 12 year olds rather than the 12 to 14 year olds. Speaking of toys, not too many toys came out in connection with this film and throughout the 1980s the big kid-friendly hits were movies that were also combined with lots of toys and video games and things like that. Apparently there was a Black Cauldron video game but it that was not widely enough released that it it didn't show up on my radar as a kid. And there was a toy based upon our friend Gurgi, but it doesn't really look like Gurgi. Well, it looks like Gurgi, but he's had way too many munchies and crunchies, if you know what I mean. And I do want to talk a little bit more about Gurgi. Gurgi seemed like he was going to be the iconic hit of 1985 and that everybody was going to love him. I kind of think of Gurgi as the 80s version of Jar Jar Binks that all the filmmakers must have thought like kids and adults are going to go head over heels for Gurgi. He's going to be the new E.T. And he just wasn't. So why? Well, I have a couple theories about that. Theory number one is that the character design of Gurgi is, is pretty cute, right? He looks sort of like... He looks like a combination of a chimpanzee and a cocker spaniel, maybe? So he looks, he looks cuddly and, and, and lovable and, uh, you know, intentionally obnoxious to a certain degree. You know, maybe maybe the voice choice could have been some something else. Gurgi's voice to me reminds me a lot of Stitch, and Stitch is a very popular character. So the only thing I can think of as to why children weren't 100% delighted with the character of Gurgi and why he hasn't taken his place upon the cuteness throne of Disney lore, I think it's the mustache. A lot of little kids don't like mustaches. There's actually a lot of old men in this movie. There's probably too many old men. We've got the old mentor character at the beginning. That makes sense, right? He's the one telling Taryn to, you know, make sure you watch the pig and go on a quest. We need that old guy. But then this other old guy shows up shackled and he's got, you know, a weird name that I still can't pronounce. So then we've got two kids, little Gurgi, and then this old guy that's kind of the responsible one. And in a children's in a children's adventure, you want the kids to be in charge of the quest, and you don't want some, some grown-up that's even a foolish grown-up like this old guy, you don't want him getting in the way telling you how to do things. There's a reason why in Star Wars that Obi-Wan Kenobi starts on the quest, but then says, hey, I gotta do these, these other things, tractor beam, I'm gonna go do that, so that you, Luke, and Han, you can go on your own adventure. 
because if Obi-Wan Kenobi was with them the whole time, you'd, you'd have this, you'd have a chaperone. And then there's the old cranky chaperone, the, the old fairy guy. So there's, there's a lot of old characters. Now, I haven't even talked about the witches coming in. It's just a lot of grown-ups. It's a lot of grown-ups infiltrating this children's adventure. And although Gurgi isn't a grown-up, he's got that stash. So he looks like he's over 30, so we kids, we don't trust him. So it might not be a perfect film, but it is a beautiful film. Definitely worth watching, and it's worth watching in high quality. So if you've got access to Disney+, Plus or some HD version, or Blu-ray, or 4K, or whatever you have, check out The Black Cauldron. Tap into your 13-year-old child self, and you're going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching. This has been part of an ongoing series called Every Awesome 80s Movie. And if you have any 80s movies you would like me to watch and analyze and discuss, let me know. And if there's any sort of fantasy film that you think that should be covered that isn't really covered too often on the internet, let me know about that too. Like and subscribe if you want to watch more of these. Bye-bye.